Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. We are live. Welcome, guys. Stu, what's up, man? Take it away. Hey, hey, welcome to the good life, everybody. Um, so here's here's the thing for tonight. What's up? Episode 28, oh. too, guys. Fired up. 28? Oh my 28. Goodness. Two eight. We getting old. Flying by. <laughs> We're almost as old as I am now. Look at that, man. We're doing some good stuff. Yeah. We gotta so, do something special for 30. We do. Ooh. We do. Ooh. Ooh. Taking suggestions for our 30th anniversary chat. You guys want to say something or send it in and let us know. Let us so, know. Today's topic, uh, mental health. Uh, specifically, Ooh. you know, mental health with we'll probably touch on trauma a little bit. We'll touch on tinkering with somebody's mind for both positive and negative intent. And yeah, so I think first I wanted to go ahead um, for Khabib's great suggestion of defining mental health so we can kind of go around the room here. So for me, whenever I think about mental health, you know, there was that whole piece of me that was raised off of health being like a physical thing. So I always compare it back to that innately. Your your physical body is able to, you know, it's healthy when you're able to function. Every every one of your organs, whether you know it or not, is operating at its best capacity. Like, you know, that's that's optimum health. To me, I think about the mind and the brain and the atmosphere and the emotions that you're feeling and you're thinking and how you're talking to yourself and the tone of voice of your narrative about what you experience. So to me, when all of that is neutral or somewhat positive, I'm considering you on some spectrum of like mentally healthy. I think the whole mentally healthy should be like viewed like a like a scale, like zero to 100%, but we can't necessarily strive for perfectionism. So everybody kind of falls on there somewhere. It's all about the mood and the atmosphere and how honest and no BSing yourself, like all your communication is. Be curious to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah, I'll go ahead and define mental health as um, the quality of the relationship between um, the quality of the relationship between my physical body vehicle and the voice in my head. Right, because that's what it really all comes down to. What is that relationship look like? And what does that quality of that relationship look like? Because there is a voice in our head and then there is everything else and we get to choose what the reality of the situation is or what we accept as reality. Um, that's what I would define it as. Mm. I love that definition, man. I think it's good. My, mine, as you guys were talking, mine seemed real simple because for me, honestly, I, and I've talked about this with a few people recently, mental health as a word, as a term, right? The terminology that we hear mental health all the time uh, it really just came on my radar three, three, four years ago in the way that we're really talking about it. I've, I've seen therapists in the past. I've known the importance of having uh, I guess, you know, a healthy mind for lack of better term, right? Like uh, that this is a muscle just like anything else and us being able to talk about things or right unravel and do all that. Like I've always kind of known that that was important as we're talking. I'm trying to think back, like, did I ever not think that was important? But it's only been over the past like three, four years that we've really, I've really talk, called it mental health, right? And what mental health looks like or means um, and I think you guys' definitions, you know, really summed it up. At the end of the day, I just think it's right that that relationship could be. You said right the relationship, the connection. It's the relationship between like our our mind and the strength, the the well being, the ability for it to be able to function to bring us what it is that we need to to do well in life. Like when we just sit with ourselves, how is our mental functioning um and the health of that right everything has a scale you know Stu, you kind of said that right like just not going to be perfect but like how is it functioning on a scale of one to ten <laughs> you know what i mean like where does it function so that's kind of how i think about this mental health but honestly it's a, it's a topic that we need to have more discussion on because we don't talk about it near nearly enough the role that our mental plays in our life in general yeah 
the role it plays, I think, Kabi, you really touched on it when um, when you mentioned the relationship between your mental and your and your physical body. And I think also, Chris, you're kind of hinting at your your mental state and the relationship with your external circumstances, like whether or not you're meeting your goals, whether or not you have different types of people. Like it all, in my opinion, pivots around mental health. And I think one of the interesting things about this is Kabi touched on the relationship between mental and physical. And the more physic like the, the the more and more physically healthy I become, and I'm not talking about just aesthetics when it comes to like glamour muscles. It's fun. I like I like glamour muscles. But you also have to do other things with your health, including just a variety of things for functionality. The further I go down that path, I've been seeing a chiropractor for a long time now. I've been seeing a massage therapist more regularly. And I'm healing my nervous system physically so my mental state can have an even better foundation to me it, it's it's like a it's like a leg of the whole stool when it comes to you experiencing your life like if one's wobbly then one shorter than the other or less less healthy you're gonna have like a really wobbly reality like things aren't gonna make sense you're gonna feel a lot of confusion so i like how you guys both drew comparisons and relationships between those yes sir yeah, absolutely. And uh, before we kind of embark on the full conversation for today, I do really want to emphasize the idea of that. Uh, how do we visualize the mental? Right. The body is easy to visualize. We, 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 we have input into our our uh, visual you know, channel. Um, but the mental is a little more difficult, right? And it's kind of like abstract, right? There's no concrete, and especially dealing in the Western hemisphere, um, a lot of folks are looking for concrete things, tangible things, um, things that are within this level of density and on this dimension. Um, I, I wanna emphasize the point that there is a voice in our mental and i'll point to the head but shoot who knows it could live in our big toe we don't really know but we attribute it to our head right again to the visualization piece and it's important that to recognize that that peanut gallery that voice is not you mm. so if you do something real quick mate if you if you if you if you just pause and just like listen to that voice I do that just now. <laughs> you know what's going down when people start like smiling and things, right? That voice is saying all types of stuff, right? What's going on? What's the point? What's he doing? Whatever that, whatever that. I just think it's so critical that every single body recognizes recognizes that because that goes such a long way to address what we call mental health. And I don't want to just assume that we all agree on this huge category of what mental health is because we start just using terms interchangeably and as if they're the same things, but they're really not. But this voice in the head goes a long way to dictate your sense of ease, right? Through as you move throughout life. Is it is it the clarity of that voice or is it just what that voice is saying? Neither. It is your ability to observe that voice as it being what it is and not reaching judgments based on that voice. So yeah. this is this is the goal of medication. Uh, go ahead. No, I was just saying. So it's knowing that the voice exists, but not actually, uh, for lack of a better term, not not actually like processing it as your thoughts. It's just knowing that that voice exists. That's what I would say, which is why I say it's neither what it says or the clarity of the voice. Because right. sometimes that voice is a little too clear, a little too loud. <laughs> sometimes what it's saying is good, bad, indifferent. It doesn't even matter. What it is is what is the meaning that you create from it? 
right? What is it that you choose to make out of that, right? So mm -hmm. somebody sees a bump on their arm, voice in their head, you have cancer. Oh my God, just like grandpa, you're gonna die. <laughs> Another person sees it and says, huh, I have a bump on my arm. Cool, I should pay attention to that, see what happens, move on. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and, and all of that, by the way, taps into all of the other stuff we always talk about nervous system, fight or flight, like whatever state. It's, it's, there's nothing new under the sun. It's all kind of the same thing. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense, right? Like, I always think about scripture where it talks about being able to bring all thoughts into captivity. I right, bring all thoughts into captivity. It's just, it's all those voices. It's being able to capture them and know that I heard this a long, I heard this a long time ago. Somebody told me this, like, you are not your feelings, mm -hmm. right? Meaning you are not the things that you think about and that you feel. That's not you. That's separate from you. Those are the, right, the signals, the things that are trying, the receptors, the things that are trying to get you to see things and understand things, but your thoughts and feelings are not you. And when you understand that, when you understand that separation, I think it leads more to this, right? Feeling good mentally, this mental health conversation, right? When you know that those things are different, you, you are not depressed, <laughs> like, right? There's, some, there's something happening, right? Those thoughts, those feelings, those, they're triggering you in a certain area, but that's not you, that's not you. And so that's, that's a big distinction I had to learn a long time ago. Uh, but I think it could help a lot of people that now that we're having this mental health conversation, they can go down that path and start to see like, oh, OK, like how did that thought come in? I know mm -hmm. we're probably going to touch on this as we keep going down, because when we were in the pregame, we talked about consumption. Right. We talked about it. But that's really what it means to start saying things like, you know, why am I thinking this? How am I? Why? Is, where does this talk track come from? And it's by what we've been consuming. So. Yeah, we'll yeah. get there eventually in the show. For sure. You know, I think um, <clears throat> it's very interesting. I love I love how the three of us all describe things in such a different way. It's part of what you mentioned can be about like squaring up on our definitions. Because not only do people like have different like definitions associated with the word, but everyone communicates their ideas in a different way. One thing that's really cool about having the three of us on here is there's individuals out there that might understand what all three of us are saying on a conversation. There's individuals out there that might only understand or connect with the way one person's saying it. Yeah. And when you talked about how all of those different thoughts and voices and emotions are not part of you, they're separate from you. It's interesting because I always phrase it differently. You've actually you've actually seen me say this before. Mm -hmm. I actually consider them all to be different parts of me that sit at the table. I actually personify them. I've done this with a couple clients. Mm -hmm. It's another way of looking at it and sorting out all these different things and recognizing that they're going to sit down at your like executive table of your mind, but they're not you. They just help you make little decisions. It was actually a really cool, I actually had to post it when my client sent it to me. There was a cool commercial with a bunch of Susans and I'm sure somebody's seen this. I'll have to, I'll have to post it. Like I said, where she walks into this boardroom and she actually has conversations with the different parts of her, like the, the lazy emotion, the, the annoying thoughts, the, the gullible one. And all of them help her make a final decision that she's comfortable with because she's given voice to all of them. She's not like completely denied or rejected one, but she's empowered him enough to speak up. So it's a really cool analogy. And I like how you talked about separation. I, I talk about like this inclusion. So yeah. when it comes to these types of things, the reason I like to bring up this whole point that we all describe it differently is there's so many different influencers out there, us, us as well that put things in different ways. There's no like one right way to explain a thought. So like sometimes you might resonate with something on an intellectual level, other times an emotional level. And sometimes you just might think about it differently. That's good. I think that's a really good point and a, and a beautiful point um, because Don't make we are up. speaking to, <laughs> <laughs> we are speaking to a very wide audience and um, there's you know, there's different things that are going to connect to different people. At the end of the day, our hope is that you go ahead and connect to what you connect with and are able to pull some information from this that's able to uplift you uh, and to help you um, 
design the life that you want to live. That's ultimately what this is all about. So however it is that you connect, whatever it is you connect with, and whoever it is that you connect with, you know, we encourage you to connect with something, God damn it. That's it. Amen. That's it. Amen. Sip the tea, could be sip the tea right after every that this is the episode. Shout out to First Baptist Church. <laughs> <laughs> way to plug it. Way to plug it. But but yeah, guys, like I'm 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 glad we can have this conversation and for everyone that's listening again. The reason why we bring these topics up on the good life is because these are the things that we have to address in order to get to that next place. Yeah. Right? Everyone's getting to a next place in their life. They're g- coming out of one season, going into another. So how do we start to navigate some of these things, right? How do we start to navigate some of these uh, challenges, some of the things that maybe we're unaware of? Again, the best part about us continuing to do this and add value and chat it up with you guys, because we're all coaches in our own right, right? Like we all have our, you know, our areas of expertise, but one of the best parts about having coaching is they can identify blind spots, areas that maybe you don't necessarily see right now that are the limiting beliefs the, the factors actually holding you back you may think it's one thing this is all this has happened to me so many times in my life where i thought it was one thing and then i discovered it was really another thing most recently could be helped right we went through a 10-day uh solid food vacation juice feast and then on the on the back end of that doing also like a 21-day workout challenge everybody right could be the real deal but the thing that he has put me through that I've been able to see is a lot of times when I think it's one thing, it's actually something different. When I thought it was my discipline, it really came down to my lack of paying attention to something uh, that was more important, right? Like the values that I had, the ways things moved around in my life, where I placed my attention, what, what's important, going outside, right? There's so many things. You think it's one thing, but it's another thing. So that's what we're bringing up tonight along these conversations where like, have you thought about the role your mind plays in your ability to do the things you want to do and to have the successes and to have the great family life or the great, you know, relationships or the health, health, the way you want, have you thought about how the mind plays a role in that? And then what are we doing to continue to shield our mind, guard our mind from the areas or, or the things um that aren't going to help us get to that place and that's why this this mental health conversation is is incredibly important uh curious to hear you guys kind of go down that path a little bit about how mental health has played a role for you in your business life and your right family life and how right you start to become more aware of these things yeah Stu, I, w- I want you to bring 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 the caboose up and uh, actually hit on like the, the the mental health aspect of it in terms of getting more, just doing what you do. You know, I'm I'm gonna bring it in from a different angle, and then you go ahead and and uh, bring it in from 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 your angle of it. Sure. I think that'll be really helpful. Um, so let me just share kind of my story. Uh, I think, you know, I. Uh, I had I had a, a what a lot of people would consider kind of like a, a chaotic type of upbringing. You know, uh, my mom had me when she was young. Uh, I li- I spent most of my time with my grandmother, uh, who who raised me until my mom remarried, and then um, we relocated to the United States. When we relocated to the United States, going from straight up Pukwasi, Ghana to 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 uh, freaking Chesterfield, Virginia. Um, it was quite the culture shock, as you might imagine. <clears throat> I left everything I knew, uh, including I left everybody that I knew, um, and I left them for good, right? So I w- I didn't know it at the time, but it would be the last time I saw a lot of people, including my grandmother that raised me. Um, and uh, as a, at that time, you know, for the first few, my sister, my mom was pregnant when we moved over, so I soon had a sister. So I became an older brother for the first time. You know, with quite a bit of gap, almost 10 years. Um, So, you know, it was quite a shift in my life. And not just that, I also had quite a bit of uh, pressure from parents. You know, we sacrificed everything to come here to the United States to try to give you a better opportunity, et cetera. Like, listen, we don't accept A minuses in this house. You know, so it was a a lot of pressure to do well and to do to do really well. 
I uh, with with limited resources and uh, maybe not what I consider limited resources at the time because I'm I'm out here supposed to compete with students that had personal trainers and nutritionists and a freaking uh, tutor that, that they'd have for their homework and I'm supposed to like be able to keep up right while while showing up at home having to do dishes you know massage my dad's feet and and uh, clean up and, 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 and clean up after after my uh, siblings right so. You know, there was uh, there was a lot, but uh, 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 and uh, and did it affect my relationship with the with the voice in my head? Absolutely. I uh, talk therapy was not encouraged in, in my in the my context. Uh, neither was really any other type of of therapy or way of getting um, whatever it was that conversation that was occurring in the mental on the mental level out into the you know, sound actual level and getting somebody else's feedback with besides the different, diff, you know, the different uh, parts of me, if you will. Right. So it took a toll. And what it, what it did was it, uh, you know, I was resentful as a, as a teenager, I was angry. You know, I would be described as angry. I really didn't think I was angry. I just felt like I wasn't heard. Right. Uh, I felt like I was uh, nobody actually heard me or took the time to listen to me. So the only way for me to really be heard was to get aggressive. And I, I, I'm actually not naturally like an aggressive individual. I actually had to learn to be aggressive. Otherwise, I would be trampled over. I, would be, I felt like I would be run over. Um, and I was right? unless I was being aggressive. So I learned that aspect of, of things. Um, and then, you know, going into college, I went to college with uh, what would be described as very poor mental health. I went into college. Um, I, I was actually angry when I went into college. <laughs> I was ready to mess up anybody that came in my way. I didn't really, you know, I didn't really care. And, and on top of that, you put behind like physical ability. So I was not, you know, there weren't too many people that was going to beat me right <laughs> and if they were i was ready i was ready to take the punches for for that's how that's how my my mind was mindset was at that time and um you know so much so that in my sophomore year of college i remember that a lot of people remember me for what you call the cake fight now i'm not even going to pepper i'm not even going to push this story because it's, it's so silly and that's not how i want to be known but it's, if <laughs> okay. you guys that Offline. knew me in college I'm hitting you up. I gotta. I gotta know this. <laughs> if you no, ask, no, not <laughs> offline. Online. <laughs> On okay, let's hear it. Right let's now. hear it. Let's go. Let's hear it. What do you mean? We breaking news right here? We yes. breaking news? Let's Come on. Come on. <laughs> it's episode twenty-eight. Episode twenty-eight. God <laughs> damn, y'all crazy, man. Um. So this, so, uh, you know, now a friend of mine then was a roommate. We've had a suite of like ten folks. And uh, we showed up, did a happy birthday midnight thing for for anybody in the suite that had a birthday, you know. So everybody came out to the living room, was chilling and whatever. And I don't even this how dumb this was. I don't even remember the specifics of what the disagreement was. What I do remember is uh, homie was like, "Oh, something about like let's say just for story's sake, let's say he said." Uh, oh, you have to wait till 1201 to eat the cake. I'm like, that's stupid. You can eat the cake whenever you want to freaking eat the cake. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, you got to wait till 1201 or blah, 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 blah. And then, and then started like pushing my buttons with some statements that he knew would like get me worked up. Right. Cause I'm, I mean, uh, this is what oh, he's an angry dude. He's like worked up. So say something like, oh, so in Africa, they didn't have cake. Right. Click, clack, click, clack. Right. So something's silly. Something's just silly. That just like, it, it like, may oh, it oh probably wasn't God. even that. It probably wasn't even that, but something yeah. silly where I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> you gonna challenge my man who <laughs> me? You know who I am? The best son of the Shanti, bro. I would <laughs> 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 bro, I was heated. Like, I was, and so it went from like zero to 100 real quick where I was sitting in the couch and I was like, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Everybody leave me. I'm cool. Then he said one more thing. I said, I'll break your neck. <laughs> I'll break it. So I lunged for him, bro. I had this dude by the neck. <laughs> I had a dude pinned to the floor and I was like, if it wasn't for, it took three, four dudes in the suite to pull me out the room. Otherwise, I was I was about it was over for this guy, man. It was over, and, and 
over some some stupid all over the cake all, all over the cake. stupidness <laughs> and and th- see listen i was i had so much built pent up mm-hmm. i had so much i was dealing with right i was so much uncertainty so much pressure so much that and no outlet nothing to really do with all of that energy but like work 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 and i've been working for my whole life i basically since i was like 17 uh, my, 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 I've been financially responsible for myself. Let's just say that. Um, so it was, a, it was just work, 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 work. Right. Uh, actually 16 really, but you know, who's counting? Um, actually, apparently I am. <laughs> <laughs> so that was me and my mental health was poor, was really, really poor. My, the way I talked to myself was poor. The way I related to others was poor. I was in negative space all the time. I, and this is the biggest thing. I woke up in a space where it's like, I want to be happy, but I feel shitty right now. I My mental is off. Like, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm not, I'm just not in a good place. Like I could pretend like I'm in a good place or I can switch it up if the context changes, but I just woke up in a terrible place and I could not explain why to anybody because I didn't want it. Right. I, I didn't want it at all, right? And you fast forward through a little bit, I like really started paying attention to it. I really started working through it. I really started doing it. I even saw a therapist, like I said, it was a waste of time because they were just like, they, 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 they did not understand me, my culture. They didn't understand anything about me. Um, I, I, But it, what helped was certain individuals. I mentioned this before, shout out Gene Wu, uh, Tufts University, really was one that took an interest in me and really started like just, she wasn't a therapist, she was, she was a teacher. Right. She just sat down and took an interest in me and an interest in my story and and actually provided me a space to start to speak. Right. Because remember, I wasn't speaking before. That wasn't really a thing. And not speak as in, in terms of therapy, but speak as in, in terms of I'm actually interested in your story. What what are you all about, Khabib? Like what happened? What's going on? Like what makes you tick? What makes you you? What's up? Like tell me the good and the bad, the whatever happened, tell me everything. And then she was also a teacher, one of my favorite classes, um, which is American studies and really put a history to the, to, to what was going on with me and, and, and allowed me to realize I was an insane for no reason. Right. So that really helped in my mental health quite a bit. And, uh, it was only the beginning of uh, my, my, my mental health journey. So I uh, just wanted to share that, kind of like the background of that. Uh, it gets, it gets, in my opinion, it gets more interesting because it actually starts trending up tremendously. That's like, that's like hitting the, 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 the trough and coming back up. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Thank you for sharing, bro. Yeah, yeah. Sure. jinx. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you for sharing that, for real. Um, I think you really, I really felt that in the chest when you said, you didn't know what was off. You just woke up with it. And that, that, that gave me a lot of flashbacks, my friend. Um, so, Chris, anything you want to say before I jump into mine? No, no, jump in, man. All right. So, for me, from what I can remember, life was super, super joyful to experience up until, and it is, it is now. I want to clarify that before I just go off on this. And have this 20 minute story and finally end with that it is now more so even but up until when i was about i think going from third yeah it was third grade to fourth grade i was basically like eight or nine i don't know what exactly age it's supposed to be if nine or ten or something but when i switched from public school to private school everything tanked immediately it was the craziest transition everything that that I had as far as social connections was all of a sudden not there. And I received so much negative energy from certain people intentionally, but also just because all of a sudden the playful vibe that I came from and fun and open-minded and all that did not exist anymore. I was not around me. I was in a completely new environment. And I'm actually really grateful for this now because all of a sudden I took my happy-go-lucky like optimistically realistic personality and was all of a sudden placed in a place where people had like no belief it seemed in 
in like connection and meaningful development and just so many things. It just seemed extremely negative. So I all of a sudden, my mental health and I all of a sudden just started listening to that voice we've been talking about. Heavy. It's like, okay, something's not right. Anymore. I'm in a new environment. I'm at this school. All of a sudden, this school's supposed to be the best of the best. All these people that I'm surrounded by are supposed to be like the cream of the crop. And all of a sudden, I just feel so much negativity from the people around me. Why is that? What's wrong with me? Because it can't be that everything else around me is off. That's statistically didn't make any sense to somebody that's 10 years old. It's like, there's no way. What are the chances that everything around me is off? And in reality, in my, in my mind, it was. Everything that I had known about public school and different types of people, some wealthy, some not, some white, some black, some everything, different religions, all of that open-mindedness stopped. So for me, I went into like this crazy depression and I think like, you know, everything was great. And then it just, you know, downhill, just immediate drop. I went through middle school and high school feeling the same way, surrounded by the same people. So now I had already bought into all of these narratives that I had labeled my community with. I was really bought in. I could not see it any other way. So I stayed depressed. When I got to college, all of a sudden, I found an amazingly diverse group of guys on my hall in Bonnie Castle. Shout out BC1R. Um, and that's a UVA. All different types of people. Tope, one of uh, Kabi's favorite, one of mine that they have like this funny beef going about God in Nigeria. But uh, I mean, it's not a beef, man. It's just straight facts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's so it's. It's always interesting, but you know, when I when I got to UVA, I started to find a bit more of my tribe. I started to feel like I was surrounded by diversity and open mindedness again, and I was able to become myself. I didn't have to fit into this boilerplate. So I also then began to to figure out the awareness of actually being honest with myself that I was depressed that whole time. And I think part of me always knew, but I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to affect my parents. I didn't want that to bring them down because I'm the only one. And so I, I kept all that in. And then finally, I basically, as soon as I realized that, oh, shit, I've been depressed, like seriously, fully, honestly admitted it to myself. I, oh, of course, I get a text right my punchline. line. <laughs> as soon so, as you realized you were depressed. As soon as I realized I was depressed, thank you, Khabib. Um, I began to like really, really work really hard in my mindset all the time. I sped up everything. Like I would hyper analyze everything about my situation everything about what's going on up here, everything about how I could do better. And if you know me, you know I talk about personal development all the time. I can't help it. It's how I work. I love it. I love it. And I just went way over the top with that and got super anxious trying to figure all this stuff out, making all these calculations and like just going crazy. So I went from anxiety to uh, depression to anxiety. And then finally, I was able to I allowed myself to go see a therapist when I was 22, thanks to a, an awesome uh, partner of mine at the time who encouraged me to do that. Um, and that began to open up this idea that I could actually change because I had worked really hard, but I really didn't make much emotional change or have any like hope about my future. So that opened the door. Then that just made me get involved in like developmental programs and civil engineering and construction. And then finally, that's how I became a coach because I was like, I've been living this. I worked through it on my own for a long time. I now understand the power of helping somebody else see their situation so they don't do the whole thing in their head because shit starts to echo. It goes back and forth. It becomes so loud. It doesn't even make sense anymore. So that's how I'm here. That's huge, man. That's a big deal. You, uh, I didn't know that you were all about personal development. We've had our conversations, man. I know we talked about it. But I didn't understand how important that part of it was for you, because that is 100% what I always lean on when it comes to this mental health conversation is the personal growth, personal development side. It's yeah. interesting. Was it innate in you? Like, did someone put you on to personal development? How did you learn that, like, this was the way to, to do things? Two things came up. I think one to address that I didn't know. A lot of people don't know that about me that don't, that haven't, I mean, you and I, have, we're, we're really starting to get to know each other now. But people that know me for years understand that I, it, it can be confusing if you don't know me well, is what I'm trying to say, because I spend so much time developing my ability to have fun as well. 
Mm-hmm. So it, if you're not if you're not actively involved in a discussion with me, you might just think I'm going out and I'm having a crazy ass time and I don't have care in the world. It's like no, you're just seeing my nightlife. You should see what I do when I'm like really getting after it because I had so little fun for so long, it throws people off. So I'm glad you actually made that point up. I brought that point up. Um, what was the second thing you mentioned? I don't even know, bro. I was just th- saying how personal development, like how personal development, how did you learn it? How did, how did it become aware? How did you become aware that that was the right way to go? Um, man, that's a great question. Be- because it's think- not innate. Like that's why the point I'm trying to make is it's not like everyone's not equipped with that. Right. Everyone doesn't know that. Like if I'm feeling depressed, if I'm down and you were an adolescent, like you were, basically a child when you started to understand like well if i just lean into this stuff yeah we feel better i didn't get that information until i was in my mid-20s yeah you know i think we there's a lot of like celebrities or figureheads or like industry leaders that we look at and they, they maybe they have this this story of struggle that that taught them hustle and i think that's what happened to me me mentally and emotionally it was so shitty of an experience for me that I was like, I'm not spending the rest of my life like this. I'm figuring this shit out as soon as possible. So that, I think that was it. Like that was my struggle. Like, you know, if you, if you look at, you know, my financial background or what I look like or, you know, whatever, you can make a lot of assumptions that I didn't have my own personal struggles. But for me, it was up here and it was dealing with my emotions and it was creating false narratives and just, yeah, it's just not having any control over what's happening. Yeah. Man, again, this ties in. I had talked about it just earlier, but again, we talked about it on the pregame. This ties into 100% what you consume. What you consume has a full correlation to what's happening up in your mind and like the, your mental health, right? has full correlation. And I don't think enough people understand that. And we talked about it a bit on the pregame, but I'll go dive in now. Like the fact that you let in with that, Stu, as far as like personal development being something that is was incredibly important for you to be able to say, you know what, this is how I get myself out of it. Well, a lot of people don't know that the things that they're consuming is what put is what's putting them in it. It's what's putting them in the thing that is that they're struggling with. It's the fact that they are watching a bunch of horror movies or something and wonder why they they're anxious. They watch a bunch of drama reality tv and wonder why their relationships aren't the greatest or why they always find ways to nitpick and right start arguments they watch the news and wonder why they have no peace right and why they think everything's (laughs) gonna gonna kill us to some degree right it's because of what they're choosing to consume what they're choosing and, and and again we use that word and i'm using that word consume I always give it up to Khabib because he's the one that was saying it a bunch and it really resonated. And we'll, you know, I know we talked about this, you diving in and really talking about what consumption means, especially on from from your side. But if we're just taking consuming and reading and what you're putting in, right, as far as reading material and things like that, what you're reading and watching and listening to has a huge effect on then what your outer world, your inner world and then your outer world becomes. And I don't think we're having the conversation enough about consumption. So it could be like dive in a bit, man. Talk a little bit about consumption and right your definition of it, because I think you have a really good working definition of like consumption and getting people to understand it and how this affects. Yeah. So um, listen, we can overcomplicate this or we can make it real simple. Uh, whether you're talking to my seventh grade uh, biology teacher, Mr. Moeller, uh, who says everything is connected, or you're talking to the great uh, Bob Marley that says everything is vibrations, right? Or you're talking to uh, a, 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 a physicist who's breaking down molecular biology or a chemist who's breaking down molecular biology or breaking down the makeup of matter and how energy is not created or destroyed whatever way you understand this it's the same thing it's the same thing everything has an impact on you everything is connected to you so if you're not vibrating how you want to vibrate you got to look at 
what am I hearing on a day-to-day -day basis? Am I hearing encouraging words? Am I hearing a sound that's vibrating and, and, and allowing my nervous system to be at ease? Am I hearing sounds that are causing me to be, to be releasing fight or flight chemicals when I don't need to release them? Am I hearing sound that's causing me to be in fright Right, in 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 in, in continuous uh, uh, sense of low state of vibration, whether that's music, whether that's words, whether that's the sounds around you. There's a lady that's uh, and um, you know I don't think she'll mind too much, but she shared in our um, massage therapy course. She shared that it's the first time she's received massage. She's probably like in her sixties. 50s 50s i would guess first time she's received massage and uh, when she was young she slept pretty she slept like a baby till she was about eight and that's when she was in a country that was a uh, war ridden and so she would have missiles flying by overhead and would hear these missiles wondering okay am i going to be hit next right so she now couldn't sleep for a while because of those sounds that were that were sounds of destruction sounds of things dying sounds of screams right and uh she messaged she her point of sharing this is that you know when she started receiving massage after joining this course um she can now sleep again Right. And tears are rolling down her face as she's telling the story. And you can tell how much of an impact that's had on her for 50 something years. Right. It's important. Right. So if you live in in, 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 in the neighborhood that's got constant gunshots, if you live in a neighborhood that's got birds chirping. Right. If you live in a neighborhood that's got a stressed out mom who's got three jobs just to care for you. So she's always in a state of like, ah, angst. Right. So that you feel like you got to go protect. You got to go provide. You got to so good. All of that make connects. Right. If you're constantly seeing violence or are you seeing demonstrations of love, are you seeing certain colors that are triggering the release of certain chemicals in you? Are you seeing blood murder? Are you seeing, right? And this can come from our TV screens. This can come from what we see right, our, right at our doorsteps, right in our household, right in our country, right in our neighborhoods, right? This can come from things that we see as we go to, 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 to uh, certain parts of the world, right? Things that we are taking on, things that we read right as video images games. that we see video games whatever it is all right what are you smelling and what do you attach that to right do you attach certain scents to being in a place of safety certain smells of food certain smells of of of, of uh, whether it be you smell fresh baked bread so you attribute that to being in a safe place because your grandmother used to make fresh bread on saturdays or your grandmother used to make you know tamales on 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 on, on fridays every day and you smell that and you say man grandma's here it's all good right or do you smell chemicals of gasoline being poured and spilled on your streets right or do you smell the the the, the smell of things decaying and dying around you or the smell of life around you and what does it elicit in your brain right do you what do you what are the words that you speak right what are the words that you speak because now now you take it from hearing and seeing and smelling and now you are actually participating actively. Now you're using those words that you heard in the television. Now you're speaking how it makes you feel. You're speaking destruction, right? What is that? You're, you're now an active participant, okay? What are the things that you put in your mouth and taste and what does that result into, right? The things that you go ahead and you consume, what are the hormone configurations of the of the living organism that you just put in your mouth? Was that thing just raised and slaughtered and lived a terrible life? Or did it live a free life and it was ready to go and said, hey, listen, I want you to take my nutrients into you because I don't want it to go to waste, right? Or I don't want to give it to the earth just now so you can have it, all right? And, and yes, you can have it. No harm, no fault. I, I got it. I, it's my time to go. Or are you forcing that thing to a point of death where it's not ready, right? <laughs> Are you applying heat to it so that you're killing it before you actually put How on earth can you derive life? Can you go ahead and get life from something that's dead?
So interesting, man. I'm gonna stop you just real quick and you can jump back in because you bring up the point of a lot of times it's about the how, right? Not the what, not what are we eating, but like, how are we eating this thing? How, how are we consuming it? How did it live, right? When you're talking about those things, I know for some people that are listening, they might not understand, right? Like what you're saying about like really taking into consideration because a lot of us are far removed from this take into consideration how that animal's life actually was lived, right? Like, was it a free range something? Was it just out? Was it just having a great life? Was it raised to do its purpose in life? And then when it was time to go, like could be said, right? It, it, it was killed, it, the, the meat was taken, right? Like it was, that's the natural process of life or are things being forced? And then we're consuming those things that are being forced because all of those things play into how we feel, how we think, how, how, how our body functions, how our mind functions. Um, and so I just wanted to bring some clarity to that point because it's important. I don't think enough of us, again, when we don't have these conversations often, we get very far away from that. It's not about, it's, it's the how, not the what. It's not like, oh, you shouldn't eat meat. Oh, you shouldn't eat this. Oh, you shouldn't consume it. Like, it's about like, well, how are you consuming it? Why? What's the purpose of this? And are we careful around that that process? So, yeah, in, that, that was yeah, a- yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you hit on a good point, and I'll expand on it a bit. Uh, and I'll start off by saying, you know, the what does matter. The what does matter, right? Don't get me wrong on this. The what does matter. Okay, um, when we consume certain materials, we're essentially, and we consume living material right whether it be plants or animals we are stealing energy point blank and everything has memory right so whatever that thing whether it be water plants air uh and of course animal tissue it has memory in there and when you consume that memory tells your dna Now, you could call it hormones. You can call it whatever you want to call it. I want to stay on the top level abstract because it allows us to think more freely than to, when I say memories, it it elicits a whole, or hormones, it elicits a whole bunch of other things that I don't necessarily want to elicit. But it has, it tells your DNA then how to express itself. It gives your DNA information as to what to do and how to express itself. So it does matter. But what matters more because we've essentially are dying on that cross, <laughs> right? You must be keto. You must be carnivore. You must be plant based. You must be meat based. Well, guys, like, like it, 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 it depends. And I, I choose to believe that we have an all knowing, merciful creator who knows that in certain situations we may be forced to eat other animals. So what do you do at that point? Well, it, it now and now it comes down to how you take that. Do you just ungrateful and consider it and just take the life of that living then without giving its proper death, its proper uh, uh, processing of, of, of treatment, right? Just like you would. Uh, for any loved one and it's proper thanks and then it's proper consumption of it that actually matters a lot more see i say the what matters because i don't want you walking away thinking you can eat whatever the damn hell you please and everything is going to be well because that's a, that's a straight lie that's not true however i also don't want you leaving thinking oh my goodness i've eaten a piece of meat i am a sinner for life That's not how that works either, okay? See, we live in a society that we want point blank answers. We want like this or that. Should I eat this or that, that or that? Well, you need to slow down and figure out what you're doing and how you're doing it because that also matters. See, when I I, I like to give both of those, the what and the how, because when I give just one, people tend to go to the extreme of of whatever it is. All right. So it's like, oh, I knew it. I can eat meat. Now they're eating meat three meals a day. (laughs) We don't need that. We don't need meat three meals a day. We don't even need meat in a week. We don't even need it in a month. Right. 
So, like, the thing is, like, don't go crazy. And then there's those that think, oh, my goodness, I can never touch anything that's ever been. Ah, really? That's tough. That's tough. And that's not necessarily, that's no longer about health. That's just about you um, clearing your conscience. And you can clear your conscience by knowing that what you're doing, that life is, is, is both, life is both life and death. It's both sides of the coin. Right. So I think it's incredibly important. And and let's to go back to our ultimate point here is that ultimately the reason you care is that all of this stuff has an impact on you and not just on you it has a huge impact on your mental health. OK, the the, the hormones that you're that you're that you're that you're uh, consuming. There's a reason for let me give you an example here and you should look this up. There's a reason for kosher and halal. There's a reason for that. It's not just some absurd, like religious thing that's just thrown in. There's a reason why they say, hey, listen, if we eat meat, otherwise, we would not eat meat otherwise. But if we eat meat, we have to what? Pe raise it a certain way, slaughter it a certain way, prepare it a certain way. And guess what, guys? I guarantee you right now, you put halal meat next to non halal meat, you can taste the difference. You can taste the difference, no question. And not just that, you then have to consider, okay, why are they doing all of that? Is it because they're weird heretic, like, like lun lunatics? Or maybe, just maybe, it relates back to our health, right? Why is it important to be a virgin on Tokra? Maybe, just maybe, it relates back to our health. Right? Why is it important to to um, um, rise with the sun and, and and go to sleep with the sun and give thanks at noon and pray at particular times? Maybe, just maybe, it's all medicine and it's all built and designed so that we're being recharged, just like a car battery. As you drive in the car, it's recharging itself. I believe we were actually built that way as humans, we were actually built that the more we live life, the more supercharged we become. We should actually be in a society where the oldest are the healthiest. I mean, repeat, we should actually be in a society where the oldest of us are the healthiest. Yeah. Amen. But we don't because we live in life that everything we do just drains our energy rather than to recharge us. And <clears throat> I could not agree more. And to add on to that, and we are raised to believe that it's the exact opposite, that you're going to get less healthy as you get older. And why is that? Why is that? Our because elders have lost the way. Mm. You, want to, you want me to tie something else in and I'll let you get right back to it. Yeah, go for it. I say the same thing about what they teach us about our money, too. They actually tell, convince us that we're going to be poorer when we're older than we are now. They actually, <laughs> they actually tell us that, hey, you should put money in a tax deferred product because you will have, you'll be at a lower tax bracket when you're older, which means mm. you're making less money. You have less money coming in. That's literally how they condition us to, to think, even in the financial world. So go back to what you're saying. Oh, man, you hit that on the head. You hit that on the head. Um, so silly, man. It's so silly that we're so backwards. The elders, right? So if you look at the way civilizations used to be, it used to be that who the wisdom keepers, right? Were the elders. So we look, we, we like you care for your elder. You look up to your elder. You provide for your elder. You, you make sure your elder is good and grim. Now what do we do? We throw it on the nursing homes and we call it a day. Right. All right, we got to live life, man. We young, right? We young, man. And we make we out here making all these dumb mistakes. And guess what they take with them? They take their knowledge with them, right? So for every generation that goes by, instead of us getting wiser and wiser and wiser, we actually get dumber and dumber and dumber because we're making the same stupid mistakes over and over again rather than learning from dad's mistakes, grandpa's mistakes, and great grandpa's mistakes, mm -hmm. right? So we're regressing. We're not progressing. We're regressing. We're not progressing. I think it's incredibly important, man. And all of this stuff comes from what? Their ability or lack of ability 
I've never seen a, a group, and I, I, I'll be traveling the world studying this for sure, but I've never seen a group where the older among us are have so many issues mental health wise so many issues they can't remember anything they can't do anything they can't do anything they can't talk they can't move they can't do any other stuff that's not supposed to be happening to us mm. that's not natural right i just always put people always go oh, wait till you're 35. wait till you're th you're, you're 45. bruh i'm gonna be better at 45 than i was at 25. Hell i'm yeah. 30 right now i'm better now than i was at 20. i was just i was just listening to nick cannon say that on the Dr. Savy documentary, there's a part where he always talks about, he's like, what is he, 80 something or 70 something, and he stands on a desk and he jumps off the desk and lands on his knees. And it doesn't even hurt him. And he's like 70 something. And it's like the most amazing thing is like, I can't do that when I'm 35, you know what I mean? Like the amount of like, dexterity and his bone structure and all of that is just far beyond like anything that we believe is even capable for us yet that's actually how it should be right yeah you know thousand percent the tara and mars <laughs> the best runners in their society are the oldest you know this has got me thinking about the uh the the mental side like you said about like you know people are losing their minds getting dementia and all kinds of stuff and the reasons as to why that may be i think alcohol is a big part of it the more i research it the more i realize that i'm i'm messing with a pretty powerful substance so you know when it comes to the mind like for me personally like if nobody else believes this and doesn't listen to like chris or could or whatever let me just take one shot at it like my mind and could as you were listening to him and I'm, I'm sure chris feels the same way is one million times better than what it was when I was younger. Like you can actually beat this, this idea that you're supposed to age with anything but grace. Like I'm going out in style. That's my plan. So, you know, when it, you know, and one thing I wanted to just touch base real quick as we come to our final minutes is could be you at one point asked me like, what exactly I do. You, you talked about visualizing the mental and how that's not as easy as visualizing you know, health or physical matters. I help people come up with exercises and present them with visualizations to help them understand and unlock how their brain works. It's an extremely custom process. Sometimes I kind of feel like a surgeon when I'm doing it and I'm getting better and better at describing the way in which I do that through all my clients. Cause it's the same approach but it's very difficult for me to put this approach into words. That's why I actually enjoy people looking at my reviews. I don't, I don't self promote much cause I don't know exactly how to say what I do yet, but just check out my reviews. If you want some feedback or hop on a phone call with me. Um, it's a, uh, the mental is a powerful spot, man. I'm glad we kind of gave it a spotlight tonight. Does anybody have any like final comments? We really didn't get to like trauma or tinkering with the mental, but we can kind of save those for another call. Listen, I'll leave with that one last piece. Um, uh, and, and Stu, I think you should clip that um, the way you just described it. And I think you should continue to mess with the words as you keep going, because that that is powerful uh, description. And I think sometimes it really comes down to being able to communicate what it is that, that, that we're taking that we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. So people understand that. Oh, OK, got it. I need that. Um, I got seven baby steps to health. All right, and this book will drop seven baby steps to health. And uh, I'm telling y'all, step number one is solid food, vacation, juice feast. And the more I learn, the more I'm convinced this is the case um, because it is the access point that a lot of people in this society need. Because once you start to clear your gut, a lot of things start to happen a lot of things start to happen and we take it for granted as to what's going down and it's not just physical but it's also mental that's taking place there's a real mental habilitation that takes place there's a real physical habilitation at the skeletal level muscular level neuro neurological level at the endocrine level at all types of levels that takes place so i would encourage you that if you haven't found your access point 
right? If you haven't found somebody that's showing you an access point that works, that go ahead and try this out with me. 10 day solid food vacation juice feast. The next group of individuals is August 22nd. August 22nd. I'll Go ahead there. and hit me up. Stu's going to be there. Stu, uh, uh, Chris already graduated. Go ahead and really join that. And, and let's take a note a, a, you to a different level. Because what I try to do in those 10 days, I try to give you into bite-sized pieces the information that I've run into that's completely changed my life. Mm. Right? And that information is really the gateway for you to start then taking your power and your control back. So DM me and let's go ahead and get you on that. It's free. Okay. I do this because I love it. I do this because I love the people. I love the results. I love what they what they get out of it. And uh, and guess what? It's going to work so well, you're going to want to pay me. <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> That's it. That's it. All these things are there. And take take could be up on, on his offer. Take, take Stu up on, like, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening, if you're listening at us or watching us, on a replay or right now live guys like this is serious this is your life this is your life this is it right we get one of these i know some people might think you come back i get it right it, it's cool uh but really you get one of these you get one of these <laughs> right <laughs> like, come get, back if you earned it <laughs> maybe right yeah if you earned it right you can, you can come back so we want you to be able to take care of yourself we want you to be able to take care of your 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 physical being, your mental well-being, your spiritual being, right? Like all of these things you have to pay attention to if you want to live that good life, guys. Again, we title the show exactly that because these are the things that we want to have conversations about that push us more towards that way. The life that you are designing, the life that you don't need a break from, right? Could be that's that's sure. the name of the game. That's the name of the game. Tonight we touched on the mental health piece and there's so much more we can dive into on this. I hopefully everyone knows, right? We only went an hour. Well, the pregame was an hour, but we only went an hour on the show. We can go so much deeper into it. And I could talk about this every show for a year. Hell yeah. There we go. Right. This is, this is what Stu does. Right. And so for sure he can talk about the mind, but it's just important for all of us to really start to get some awareness around it and start making our strides in the right direction becoming more aware of the things that we need to shift in our life in order to get there. So this is awesome. Hopefully it's been awesome for you guys. We love it. We have fun. We, we enjoy chatting with you. Feel free to reach out, send us a message, DM us, anything. We want to have the conversation, keep this conversation rolling every single Wednesday. We're coming here every single Wednesday. Pre-game is at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Instagram the the show the show is eight o'clock eastern 5 p.m pacific jump on facebook linkedin youtube instagram we're here we want to get you value we want you to be a part of this good life with us um and continue to tune in every single week guys so uh we love you we want you to win in life let's go out there and make it happen till next yeah. time let's have, let's have a good let's have a good week enjoy a good life take care take care everybody so what? Well. <laughs>